Hi, I'm your host, Marsha Florence for Just Ask. Today, our show is Oakland Pet Adoption Center. Hurry back and join us. I'm your host, Marsha Florence with Just Ask. Today our show is Oakland County Pet Adoption Center, and we have with us the Administrative Supervisor herself, Joni Toole. Good morning, Joni. Good morning. Glad thanks to have you here. Well, thanks for having me. Now, Joni, I noticed that this is the season for pet adoption, and we wanted to ask you to come in and tell us a little bit about the Oakland Pet Adoption Center and apprise us on how people relate to pets and what does it mean for the season. Sure. Um, well, uh, the Oakland Pet Adoption Center is actually a subsidiary of the Oakland County Animal Control Division. Um, the Animal Control Division goes out and picks up the stray animals and the Pet Adoption Center houses them. We also take in uh, owner give ups. Uh, those are people who can no longer take care of their pets for some reason. Um, they can drop them off there for a small fee and then we try to find them homes. Uh, right now, we seem to have a huge influx of cats. Um, and we've been getting a lot of dogs lately within the last couple weeks. Mm -hmm. And not just big dogs, we've gotten some smaller breed dogs in too, which is unusual. Um, so we have just a variety of animals there that need good homes. Um, we're getting filled up and uh, we do have some great programs like the CATS program. It's companion animals touching seniors, and a senior citizen can come to the shelter, pick up a cat. Uh, we will provide the food, the litter. They just provide the love and uh, keep it for 30 days. And if they want to keep the cat after 30 days, then they may do so. And to date, we've probably done about 85, and none of them have come back yet. So. Okay. Now that's really nice. Mm -hmm. Now do you guys go out into the community also? Yes. Like some of the senior centers or things like that? Yes, we do. Okay. Um, a lot of the senior centers have uh, caught wind of this and they have invited us. Mm -hmm. uh, so we take, you know, like six to 12 cats to the centers and the seniors there then don't even have to come down to the shelter. They can pick the cat out there mm -hmm. at the center. Okay. So it's a really great program. Cats are really great companions, especially for elderly people because mm -hmm. they're easier to take care of. Um, you just got to change the litter box every so often okay. and feed them every day. And uh, I mean, it's, and, uh, it's, it's proven that cats and pets in general, you know, lower blood pressure, lower stress, mm -hmm. uh, that type we of thing. We would highly re you know, recognize the fact that uh, companionship of, of many mm -hmm. sorts would help another person stay active in, in their lives, whether it's adopting children, adopting pets, uh, being taking part as a volunteer, mm -hmm. those kind of things. Do you have a lot of volunteers that come in to support your efforts? Yes, we do. In fact, it's a great opportunity for uh, seniors or even people with disabilities. Um, we have several dogs that they can walk. Um, if they're unable to handle a dog walking, then uh, we have several cats that would just love a lap to lie in and you know be petted and brushed and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. So there's just all kinds of opportunities um, at the uh, pet adoption center that now we would. How are you would, funded? We are government funded. Um, however, that doesn't cover all our costs. We do have a legacy fund is what it's called. Uh, people do donate to the shelter and that is used strictly for the animals, um, buying uh, medical equipment for the animals. Um, we also use that fund. If a dog comes in that's severely injured or a cat comes in that's severely injured, we will use that fund to help uh, fix that animal up and find it a new home. Wow. So how many pets altogether does your facility house? Do you have a, a roundabout number? Uh, we can house probably about 100 dogs and mm. probably about 150 cats. Right now we have 200 cats and probably 100 dogs. Wow. So, okay. yeah, it's uh, for some reason, I don't know if it's the cold weather mm -hmm. um, or the climate that we're in, uh, the economic times we're getting in a lot of uh, cats and dogs. 
um, that okay. need good homes. Okay. Any other pets besides cats and dogs can come into the facility mm -hmm. or that's mainly? We do have uh, rabbits. We have probably three or four right now. And uh, we do occasionally get gerbils, hamsters, snakes, birds. And we do get other things in besides dogs and cats. Wow, so people will drop off a gerbil because they mm -hmm. no longer can care for the gerbil or a yes. pet rabbit. Yes, mm -hmm. yep, and in turn then we try to find it a good home. We work with a lot of rescues, a lot of animal rescues mm -hmm. that help us as well as trying to get the word out that if you're looking for uh, a wonderful pet, um, your local animal shelter is the place to be. Okay, because a lot of people just go past the elderly shelters and think automatically they should go to a pet store. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, yeah. <coughs> excuse me, do you feel as though when they go to a pet store, even though a pet store says, here's a nice little puppy, mm -hmm. that all the, the shots and everything that you could get if you come to a shelter, all that's taken care of? Mm -hmm. Yes. In fact, we're finding out more and more that the um, pet stores are being, um, uh, their dogs and cats are coming from puppy mills and okay. such. So we're finding out a lot uh, about that. Mm -hmm. um, as well as there's so many um, wonderful animals at your local shelter. You never know what you're going to find. We get purebreds, mm -hmm. we get mutts. Um, you know, it, on any given day you can walk in, the variety is just overwhelming. And uh, you're saving an animal's life, Right. really. Okay, okay. Well, we're going to go to a break on that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Keep in mind now, we're here for you, so if you're interested in adopting a pet, the key word is that you can go to your shelter, and first and foremost, check out a shelter to make sure that you have least given thought to adopting a pet who needs a family. We'll be right back. Who let the dogs out? Who, 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 who? And ladies and gentlemen, we're here with Ann Roth of Camp Bow Wow, and she's going to give us some insight on what microchipping your pet may mean. Okay, Ann? Well, a microchip is a small implant that goes in your dog's neck, and it's able to be scanned. So if your dog is ever lost and they're returned to a shelter or a veterinarian facility by someone who finds them, that person can then scan the neck of the dog, and that chip can is linked to your information. There's a database out there that contains the names of address and addresses of people whose dogs have been microchipped. So then they can retrieve that name and address information, give you a call and tell them that you have they have your pet. And welcome back to the second half of the show. For those of you who are just not joining us, we have Oakland Pet Adoption Center with Joni Toole. Now ladies and gentlemen, earlier when I left off I was telling you that this is the season the cold months usually is the pickup time for most people who want to say, oh, I think I want to adopt a pet. Why not go to your nearest humane society as well as the Oakland Pet Adoption Center and find a pet of your choice? As Joni said earlier, it doesn't have to be a, a dog or a cat. It may be a rabbit, could be a gerbil. I don't know about the snakes, but <laughs> you do have options of other pets that you can select. As you saw earlier before we went off the air, uh, we have a visitor here and our visitor here doesn't have a name, but we've been calling this beautiful uh, lab uh, QT all day long. So <laughs> we want to welcome QT to the show. And believe it or not, QT is pretty tame right now. Uh, Joni, tell us a little bit about uh, the, our visitor here that we've been naming all day. Sure. She is a black lab. She's about 14 months old. Uh, she is a girl. She is available for adoption right now at the Oakland Pet Adoption Center. We haven't fixed her yet, but before they take her home, we would um, spay her. And okay. she's got all her shots, and she's ready to go. Okay. Now, I want people to get the wrong impression she's not frisky. She's real frisky. Okay. <laughs> and, but uh, the fact that she's real frisky and friendly, that's mm -hmm. mainly what a person should want in their home, that a pet that they can have that will be jubilant, uh, adaptable to the children if they have children in the home. Yes. Um, I always stress uh, to do your breed research. Okay. Um, because you may live in an apartment, you wouldn't want her in an apartment. She's kind of big and mm -hmm. she needs a lot of room to kind of play. Um, but we do have small dogs and cats are perfect for apartments. Condos um, allow animals as well. So do your breed research. Um, see what type of breed would fit into your family. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people don't do that and that's where 
you know, the heartbreak comes in that they have to get rid of the animal, and that's where right. we see a lot of that with people bringing them back, okay. and they just they can't handle them, or they're too big, or they weren't. Uh, what they thought that mm -hmm. they were going to be. Some people move and they don't realize that when you move, if you move into a condo or apartment living or a townhouse, that community area might say no pets allowed or small pets only and you've had this beautiful dog for so long and yet that dog can't go with you. Yes. But you want this house. Yes. So do you end up with a lot of people's pets that way because they weren't sure of the location Yes. availability for especially pets. right now um, we're seeing a lot of people who are either moving out of state mm -hmm. or they can't afford the animal anymore okay. unfortunately um, when you're tightening your belt that's probably one of the first things you know okay. luxuries to go is a pet right. um, so we see a lot of that people bringing them in because they can no longer take care of them no longer afford them or they're moving out of state to find work mm -hmm. so that may um, and I'm sure it is um, uh, helping with the influx of animals that we're getting right now. Okay. Um, okay. What is your service area? We cover a northern Oakland County and a southwestern Oakland County. When you get into southeast Oakland County, you have all those cities like Bloomfield, Birmingham, Troy. They have their own animal control. Um, however, some do house with us. They have a contract like Troy. Uh, they contract with us to house their animals. So mm -hmm. if you live in the city of Troy and you're missing your animal, that's where you would want to go is the Oakland Pet Adoption Center okay. to find them. Okay. Now is there a certain time of the year that, that the pets, or well, most animals might get a little frisky and they're outside and they start trailing each other and you see like a, a patch of dogs and all, <clears throat> excuse me, all of a sudden somebody said, well, you know, let's call Humane Society to get these dogs, animal control off the streets. Mm -hmm. If the person, if the family member doesn't have, I see now lately that there are microchips and things like that, yes. they can't find their pets. Are you suggesting that they go to the shelters and find out if their pet has been placed in the shelter? Or yes, something? Okay. most definitely. That should be uh, one of the first phone calls that you make if your pet's missing. Mm -hmm. um, microchip your pet. Also, it's Michigan state law to have your dog licensed. Okay. So make sure they always have a license or a pet ID on them. That's their ticket home. Uh, if we get one in uh, with a license or microchip, we mm -hmm. try to get a hold of you as soon as possible. Okay. That way your animal doesn't have to stay at the shelter so long you can come oh, and pick them okay. up. Is the microchip implanted in the, in the yes. pet? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. They usually do it in the back of the shoulder. Okay. And uh, sometimes they do migrate, but we uh, we scan every animal that comes in. Okay, and that can tell you where the animal or the pet was. It does it have like a person's personal information or actually what, what happens is um, it'll tell you the manufacturer of the chip. Okay, and it'll give you a number. And so you have to call the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. They match up the number, and then they can give you the owner information. Okay. Now, is that expensive? Uh, shipping? Not usually. Um, okay. I mean, I'm not trying to discourage people from oh, no, no, no. shipping their pets, <laughs> but you know, people are like, well, when they start doing that? Okay, so, but I know it's a good way to keep up with your it pet. Is. When you see signs in the stores that say lost, you know, pet, mm -hmm. and people are willing to pay, if they already had their animal um, microchip, microchip mm -hmm. they won't have to pay. Okay, so that's one of the cues there. You don't have to pay to find your own pet back if, you, if your pet wanders off and it ends up in the shelter. Well, they may have some fees involved because okay. we do charge Correction. boarding and um, we have to enforce Michigan state law, which says that your dog has to be licensed and vaccinated. Okay. So that, those two things have to be done before they leave the shelter. But um, it reunites you with your pet faster, that's for sure. And a lot of vets um, will scan uh, stray animals as well, and then the animal doesn't even have to go to the shelter. If okay. a citizen finds an animal mm -hmm. and takes it to a local vet and they scan it and find out who owns it, they can contact them, and that way they avoid the shelter altogether. Okay. What's your relationship with uh, agencies like Paws with the Cause, Leader Dogs for the Blind? Because I see a lot of beautiful labs mm -hmm. being trained for those organizations. So oh, yes. Do you have Most any relationship definitely. with those? Yes, they come and they'll come through the shelter and look for special animals. Um, I can't go into their criteria because I don't know that much about it, but they do take um, animals from us. In fact, a leader dog from uh, for the blind was in a couple weeks ago and took a couple dogs. Okay. And they're training them now. So we do provide them with, with animals. Okay. Okay, now, ladies and gentlemen, QT, as I named her, has been lying here so peacefully for the last few minutes. It was unbelievable because she was running around the studio all day. Okay, so it's not that she doesn't play.
and maybe she's on her own nap time. Now, do the <laughs> do the pets have certain time that they play and run in the shelter, or it could just be any old time? In they... the morning, they're very excitable. Um, okay. That's because that's when we come in, mm -hmm. and most of them have slept all night. So in the morning, they're they're fairly active, and then the afternoon, they kind of taper okay. off. Just like humans. Exactly. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, so ideally. Uh, uh, a pet like QT, mm -hmm. you tell a person she's 14 months, mm -hmm. she can be neutered. Can a person request that she be, is it neutered for? Spay, for spay? a female. Okay. They, um, all of our pets that are adopted from mm -hmm. the shelter are either spayed or neutered. Okay. So that comes with the adoption fee. Okay, okay, okay. Then they get all the shots. Yes. Along yep, with it. she'll have her, dis she has her distemper, her rabies. Uh, mm -hmm. She's been treated for fleas. She's been uh, treated for worms. Now, a, a dog like QT would probably fit best maybe with a growing family, mm -hmm. uh, maybe not quite an elderly person or a handicapped person because she is quite active. Okay. Um, and like I said, apartment, I, I probably mm -hmm. wouldn't take a dog like QT. Okay. I, you know, if you had a nice yard mm -hmm. um, Big, that she could run, yard. yeah, okay. and some kids to right. romp around with her, she would be Small very happy. Small red ball, throw the ball. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Well, I, because I actually enjoy seeing pets be active and happy. Mm -hmm. And I always had the assumption, I used to have a, a white German Shepherd, and long as my dog, his name was Buddy, as uh, long as Buddy's tail was up and wagging, mm -hmm. I knew that Buddy was the happiest dog in town, you know, and that tail mm -hmm. was so big mm -hmm. and would knock things off the table. So is it true that if a dog's tail is down, he could be sick or, or sad mm -hmm. or something? A lot of times they will actually tuck their tail between mm -hmm. their legs mm -hmm. if they're nervous or really scared. We see a lot of that when the animals first come into the shelter because okay. it is a scary place. It's really noisy and there's a lot going on and people are pulling you this way and poking you with a needle. and scanning you for the microchip so we see a lot um, of that uh, you know they're kind of um, apprehensive of that type of thing but mm -hmm. then they usually warm up and uh, QT is a great example that she's just when she when I saw her in the cage she was so docile and then <laughs> got her Not out now. and she yeah okay. okay I think we tired her out yeah, that's, <laughs> that, that's all right for now Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go to another break, and when we come back, we're going to have one of QT's friends on the set with us, and uh, more good questions from Joni Tool uh, about pet adoption. We'll be right back. Say, my doggy is nothing if he don't have a bone. And ladies and gentlemen, we have Gail and Greg and Sissy uh, getting ready to get her microchip in today. So I want to ask Gail, how does she feel about getting Sissy microchip? So what do you think about that? Oh, I think it's a great thing. You know, you never plan on losing your animal, but just in case it happens, and unfortunately this is a super way to, um, someone finds them, have my name on file, and where she lives. Okay. When you love your pet as much as you do, mm -hmm. you want to make sure that, hey, if something happens, she will be located, brought back to you safely? Right. Safe. What do you think about that, Greg? I think another thing too, because she's a friendly dog. She's a friendly dog, and if she and she's never out of our sight when we go out there. But if someone were to call her, then she'd probably go to him. So this is better for us that if something were to happen, and let's say she gets kidnapped, then we could trace her down. And welcome back to the last half of the show. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you're just not joining us and it's the end of the show, we're here with Joni Tool, who's the administrative supervisor for the Oakland Pet Adoption Center. And she's enlightening us on information on how to adopt a pet, what kind of pet you can get, and some of the services that the Pet Adoption Center offers. Offers, I'm sorry. So we have another guest on the show. Now notice when we say guest, the pets here on the show don't have names. So if you're interested in adopting a pet, the cue is that you will name the pet and the pet will love you for more of the names that you give them than we are today. So uh, without further ado, we have our second guest along with Joni. And... Uh, her name is Kitty Carlisle. Okay, so I named her Kitty That's Carlisle. So, yeah, uh, Joni, tell us a little bit about Kitty Carlisle. Sure. She is an eight-week-old domesticated short hair is what we call them. Um, they're not a purebred breed. Um, they're just a shorter hair cat. Um, very easy to take care of. And she's an orange tiger. That's the coloring. Um, okay. And uh, she's very cute, very loving, and she's just purring the whole time. And her and Cutie are getting along pretty good right now. Okay. I mean, they're All right. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's pretty good. Now, now, let me ask you this. So you have uh, programs that are tailored to spayed and neutered. What is that? Yes, we have a spay-neuter clinic um, okay. that we've been holding um, uh, monthly. 
since 2007. It's aimed at cats right now because that's our biggest problem. Mm -hmm. We have such an influx of cats. Um, it's for low-income residents of Oakland County. It, the cost is $20, and for that you get um, your cat spayed or neutered. Uh, they get their shots. They get treated for fleas. They get treated for worms. Um, and then they're all set to go. That's pretty good. But yes, and, and I think a lot of people don't realize that you need to spay and neuter your cats mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. I think we've gotten the message out about dogs that they need to be spayed or neutered and they live a longer, happier life. Okay. But for cats, I don't think we've gotten that message out um, quite mm -hmm. as good as we uh, possibly could have. And a lot of people don't know that $20 is really inexpensive for that service because yes. overall you can go to a vet Oh and yeah, it's kind of like extra nominal. Yeah, store, about right? 150 to 200 dollars okay. you're looking at. Okay. So, so people are not familiar with a lot of the services. Just give us a little bit of insight on some of the services, so we can encourage our viewers to look more into adoption centers for pets as well as the Humane Society. And I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to downcast uh, dog stores and pet mm -hmm. stores, but mainly we can utilize services that have less of a cost factor involved oh, yes. and provide even the same, if not more, services. Yes. Okay. Now, uh, for the Oakland Pet Adoption. Center, like I said, we do house uh, the stray animals that our animal control division uh, picks up. So if you have a stray animal running at large within our service area, which was the northern and southwestern uh, Oakland County, um, we would come out and pick it up. Um, we also provide uh, the low cost spay neuter programs. We also have a volunteer program um, that's very successful, um, but we're always looking for more volunteers. Um, and that is something that even um, maybe people with their grandkids might want to do. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Because as long as they have an adult supervision, you can bring your kids in as well. And it's a great family activity to take a dog out for a walk. So a person can actually pick, pick an animal up take them for a walk, bring mm -hmm. them back. How about can they spend the night overnight, a couple of days or anything like that? Well, we do have a foster program as well. Okay. Um, you would just have to fill out an application. We don't do it a lot with the dogs because we don't have a huge problem with the dogs. But mm -hmm. for uh, the cats, we have um, cats that have had kittens or we have kittens that have no mother. Mm -hmm. And those, a lot of times, will stick into fostering. Wow. And that's another great way, okay. too, to have the kids help out. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were, we're also working with uh, local school districts to give kids uh, ca class credit mm -hmm. for fostering uh, kittens or a mom cat. Okay. Okay, now I, I should have asked you earlier, if a person wants to volunteer their time and services, do you have a phone number they can call? Yes. All they have to do is call 248-391-4100, uh, or you can go on to our website, which is www.oakgov.com backslash pet adoption. It's okay. just as easy as filling out an application, and our volunteer coordinator will get back with you and set up an appointment for you to come down. We show you the ropes. And then we let you go. Um, <laughs> you can, you know, take a dog out that day to, to walk or mm -hmm. pet the cats or whatever it may be that you're interested in. Okay. I feel like if, if people do more volunteering, they would feel a little bit more better at times. You know, sometimes you're at home, you say, wow, I don't have anything to do. Mm -hmm. Volunteer your time, ladies and gentlemen. If you are kind of bored at home or lost and think that no one cares, you can care for a pet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, it's wonderful. You don't know how much the human contact mm -hmm. uh, with someone just really brightens the day of these animals. And we have a lot of senior citizens that come in and volunteer their time and they have a great time doing it. And they're one of our best volunteers, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. And you know, and, and, and true enough, I commend you for having a, a compassionate heart uh, for animals, period, because it takes a certain kind of person to do a certain kind of job. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't just walk in there and say, okay, I'll watch your dogs for the day, this yes. and that, and spend a lot of your time and, you know, p and have the patience mm -hmm. to deal. Now, do, off and on, do you guys get any kind of vicious animals that you have yes. to calm down because they're transitioning? Yes. That, well, that's another um, a program that we do have. Uh, we handle all the bites within um, our service area, animal bites. It could mm -hmm. be a dog, could be a cat, could be a woodchuck, could be a bat. 
um, but we handle all those. Um, and we do get vicious animals in. We keep them in a separate part of the building because okay. uh, they, they have to be quarantined mm -hmm. uh, for 10 days for observation of rabies. But then we do get some in that are, um, especially cats, because cats, I think, freak out a little more mm -hmm. than dogs. And when they come in, they're a little, you know, crazy. So we'll just leave them alone for a couple days. And if they chill out and then we can move them in and, and find them a good home, that's, that's okay. fine. So when they chill out and they realize yeah. that, they're, that you're not the enemy, exactly. they're kind of like, okay. I'm just be, I was just protecting myself. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> okay. Exactly. Well, that's human nature. Anything yes. that feels like, you know, they're being attacked, want to know mm -hmm. that, hey, I, I can stand my guard and then yes. realize you're not the enemy, mm -hmm. just warm up to you. Yes. Oh, okay. Yep. Well, that, yep. that, that makes <laughs> sense. Well, you know, a lot of people don't know that the, the, these two may not be that formally introduced, but they're mm -hmm. just as comfortable now, okay? And uh, I can see uh, mm -hmm. QT being in someone's mm -hmm. home and... <laughs> You know, being restful and probably protective of that person and definitely yes. uh, showing love. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Kitty Carlisle will grow up and be a beautiful, <laughs> the next, uh, what's that cat on TV? Morris. The next Morris. Morris. Yeah, see, that's why you should get cute. The next female Morris. Right. You, know, you, you never know how stardom <laughs> is made. And, she, and she's just as relaxed. Yes. Okay. Now, a kid in that, let me ask you this. A kid in that small, are they still having milk? Do you have to have? Specialized formula or something made? Usually they're weaned off their mom by about eight weeks. Okay. Um, we usually prefer like 12 because then they really get the immunity that the mother has in her system. But um, a kitten, um, they're going to be a little more rambunctious than an, an adult cat. Um, but we have a lot of adult cats at our um, Oakland Pet Adoption mm -hmm. Center. And, uh, you know, the kitten may not be the perfect fit with an elderly person or a handicapped person. But we have lots of adult cats that need wonderful homes, and they're just great cats, and they're just waiting for someone to come and, okay. and, and right. make them a new home. Well, I want you to give out that website and phone number again if somebody got a question or want to volunteer their time or want sure. to stop by and yeah. see the services themselves, you know, because we're, we're here in the studio, ladies and gentlemen, so we're limited on space, what we can do here. But, you know, I commend and recommend that anyone who's interested in pets or is a pet lover, Go to your nearest uh, center, if it's Adoption Center, if it's Humane Society, and actually get a chance to wander through and find out if you want to be a, a pet care, a person who cares for a pet. So can I get that phone number? And sure. And we love to have visitors, by the way. Okay, we'll I mean, stop just by. come on down okay. and visit us. <laughs> um, it's 248-391-4100, or visit us on our website. It's www.oakgov.com slash pet adoptions okay. and we do have adoptable animals um, listed on pet finders as well so even if you don't think a lot of people don't think they could go through the shelter it just breaks their heart mm -hmm. you can look up on pet finder and see if there's something on there that interests you okay all right well joining too i thank you so much for coming to see us and it was good meeting kitty carlisle <laughs> and qt and i just gave them names okay they don't have yeah. names but i like those names <laughs> thank you come back and join us again well, thank you so much for having okay. us okay okay well ladies and gentlemen i can't you know express to you any further that we're here for you to provide a service and so today's service was to encourage you as individuals and families to go to your nearest shelters or adoptive pet centers and consider adopting a pet uh, even if you can only just volunteer your time, I would recommend that you do that and have fun in doing so. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you know who I am. I'm your host, Marsha Florence with Just Ask. And what do I always say? If you know someone with a disability or if you just have a general question, don't be afraid to ask. Just Ask. I'm your host. Thank you.